So this is one of the newest printers from Chigi Tech, the X Plus 3. And here's everything right out of the box. And you can see this printer takes up quite a bit of space. And that's for a good reason, seeing that this has a 280 by 280 by 270 build volume, along with the entire machine being fully enclosed. And it even has a removable top. So if you don't need a heated chamber, you can vent all that out. There's a nice little goodie box that comes with this that has a half size roll of filament in it that looks like it's Chigi Tech branded and it's a rapid type of PLA. So basically made to be printed fast, which this printer should be capable of. Since are saying that it can print up to 600 millimeters per second with some pretty quick acceleration as well and it also comes with all the tools you need to maintain this printer along with some extra parts to set it up but if you want the entire list of everything that came in here here it is and you might have noticed that there is an extra hot end in here and here it is so you can swap this all out with just a few bolts and two plugs and these are designed to be swapped out so you can have one with a copper nozzle and one with a hardened steel nozzle for abrasive materials and both of the hot ends are rated up to 350 degrees celsius and there's even a warning on the print head to remind you to switch it out if you're printing with these materials. It also has this nice and simple dryer box so you can keep moisture away from your filament but it's not actively heated or anything like that. It just has a bag of silica gel in it to soak up any moisture and the setup of the machine is pretty straightforward especially since the screen shows you everything you need to do but if you're more into physical instructions it does have those as well. But with it all set up here's all your controls and this does have some internal storage with some pre-sliced files. So I'm just going to print the benchy that's on here that should take about 17 minutes to finish which is definitely pretty quick and it does give you a warning or a reminder when you start a print so you don't forget to remove the top cover of the enclosure if you're printing in something like PLA or TPU because it'll get a little too warm in there and things will start to clog up. But if you're printing with higher temperature materials you want it to be pretty warm in there and it also has a built-in heater so you're not going to just passively heat the chamber. So you should be able to print materials like ABS and nylon without worrying about them warping but we're not doing anything like that right now and this benchy is just printed in this applied PLA. And yeah after about 17 minutes I have a finished benchy which which looks really good. But this is also pre-sliced, so it should come out good. So I'm going to slice my own file and use the Chidi slicer to do so. And this was pretty straightforward and easy to do, and you can even send it over to the printer over Wi-Fi, which all worked fine until it asked me to start the print from the computer, which didn't work no matter how many times I tried it. But the file was transferred over to the machine, so I was able to start it from the machine screen. So definitely not as intended, but I was able to get it to work at least. And a little over two hours later, my print is all finished, but it doesn't look like the surface quality came out too good on one side. But overall, it looks like everything else is fine and this will still work as a functional print and after looking at the file in the slicer again I can see all these little white dots which are the Z seam and no matter how I change this it always looks terrible on this model and after talking with my friend Fetter over at 3d print SOS he suggested that I checked out Orca slicer so I did and here's the same model in Orca slicer and it looks a lot cleaner and you can see the Z seam is pretty much a straight line on this which should print a lot cleaner and I was able to connect Orca slicer directly to the printer and send the file over and start it all from my computer and right inside of the slicer you're able to go into fluid and check on everything that the printer is doing along with change settings. So as you can tell this is a much better option compared to using the GD Tech slicer. So here's the original print and here's the one that was done in Orca slicer and you could tell that it came out much better. So from now on this is a slicer I'm going to be using with this printer and probably others in the future as well. And if you're wondering what that part was for it's actually one piece of a stock attachment for this gun that kills flies using salt and it just kind of slides onto the back of it like this. And since I was three printing stuff for this I made a wall mount for it as well. So I wanted to print something a little bit more challenging and something that would take a bit longer so I picked out this articulating dragon and I made sure that there was no brim or raft on this. And from the looks of it this printer had absolutely no problem printing this and it only had a little bit of stringing on the horns. So not too bad especially for a silk filament and all of the segments on this are completely free moving. So next up I want to try something a little bit bigger that would take over 10 hours. So I printed this really cool dice tower and printing something at this size with all these details and only taking 10 hours hours is extremely fast and this is only a 0.4 millimeter nozzle printing at 0.2 millimeter layer height and I'm honestly amazed on how well this came out and this is a very clean print as you can see with no supports or anything like that. Granted this model was designed to be printed without supports. I also really like the transition of colors in this filament and if you're wondering what I use here it is and I'll make sure I would link to everything in the description so it's easier for you to find everything. I did a few prints in PETG and ABS to make all the parts for these little posable robots. But unfortunately, I accidentally wiped the entire card that had all the footage for that. 
but at least I can show the final results here. So overall, in my opinion, this is a pretty good 3D printer, and I was really hoping it would be, seeing that this whole printer has been reworked. And if you do a quick search on YouTube for this printer, you'll see some weird videos on it, saying that they no longer are selling it. And that's because the first versions of this were so bad that they had to rework everything like I was just saying. And sadly, I never got the first one, so I have nothing to compare it to. And this new version just kind of worked for me out of the box. And honestly, I don't really have any complaints, other than the slicer not being the best, and I could just use Orca instead. Oh, and I guess the fact that you have to load the filament on the back of the machine, which is kind of annoying. But I'll definitely be using this a lot more for projects in the future. And if I run into any problems, I'll let you know. And if this printer is a little too big for you, they have a smaller one, the X Smart 3, that is also running Clipper and using a lot of the same parts, it looks like. And if you're curious about the pricing of these, as of recording this, the X Plus 3 is $700, the smaller X Smart 3 is $400, and their biggest one, the X Max 3, is $1,000. So at least one of these should fit your needs and budget, if you're in the market for a fast, enclosed 3D printer. I think that pretty much sums up everything I have to say about this printer. Chidi Tech did send this out to me for a review, with no strings attached, basically here's a machine, make a video. And it's great to see that they fix all the problems that they were having before. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.